Hey guys, welcome back to the Establish the Past podcast presented by Clutch Points. I'm your host, Blake Level. With me, as always, my co-host, Dylan Reagan. And this is it, Dylan. This is the big episode heading into the 2023 season, one of our favorite episodes that we do each year. And that is our 2023 NFL season predictions where we give our picks for the winners of each division. Uh, we give our wild card picks and then we pick our Super Bowl winner. Um... Always a fun exercise here, Dylan, <laughs> one that we are sure to get wrong in many spots, as usual. And so, because I said that, let's just go ahead and humor our fine listeners out there uh, with our picks from last year, because I think that's important, and you you kind of added these to the sheet we have. Um, for all of you who remember what my pick was last year, I said, I'm going bold. I'm going to pick the Chargers to make the Super Bowl. We know that didn't work out. Um, I had the Bucks beating the Chargers in the Super Bowl. You had the Bills beating the Rams. So, Dylan, it was not our finest year in terms of um, Super Bowl picks, but um, I think we, we also both had the Broncos making the playoffs. I'd like to note that as well. <laughs> we got some right, though. Um, I think we both just kind of decided last year we were going to, eh, let's just get away from being predictable, right? Let's, let's just get away from that. Spoiler alert. We're not going to get away from being that predictable, uh, perhaps, with our 20. We're going to go back to what worked, Dylan, I think, this time around. Yep. So. Absolutely. I, I will say we learned from our, our preseason mistakes last year. I think by the end of it, we had pretty great just game-by-game uh, -game prediction yeah. records. We were right up there with anyone you'd look up online. So that part, at least, we kind of learned. It, it was a different season, right? Like, we had a lot of teams and just the philosophies that changed. Um, you, you, the passing was down across the league. I, you kind of started seeing a shift back towards running the football with a lot of lighter uh, boxes and lighter defenses and too high stuff. And it just kind of was a funky year, but it took some time. Then we kind of got in a groove of who we knew to, to rely on. So, But by then, it was far too late, obviously, for this preseason picks. Um, but, yeah, this year I think we're – because we've been pretty good with the preseason picks – previous seasons before 2022 i think uh, even if the super bowl ones are obviously that's always the toughest one um but at least in terms of the teams that made the playoffs this year we're i think we this is our firm response now we're also shifting back after seeing our 2022 picks and we're like all right we're not gonna let this happen again but there's a few toss-ups obviously we'll go through these but um i i'll be less uh, there's at least on the nfc side i'd be a little more surprised about some of these teams at least if, uh, like a good four or five just not even if they don't win their division at least not being in the playoffs we disagree on a few of them and same with the afc there's is, it's a much more crowded race i think there's uh, you could make an argument for as we've said on this podcast like 12 teams 11 teams to make the postseason how it all shakes out it's gonna be a little less predictable although there are some teams um that we've grown accustomed to seeing with the best quarterbacks in the league at the top that i'd be surprised even if they don't win their division with the uh, bengals and bills um and those two in particular i'd be surprised if they miss the playoffs altogether but the it's going to be quite the race in those two divisions and yeah it should be a pretty fun season even if the nfc is a little different hey yeah i'm still going to enjoy it even if the the uh, quality of some of these playoff teams might not be up to par with the afc all right let's jump into our picks you just mentioned the bills we start with the afc east um be honest still never gave a second thought to this one uh, i certainly did on some of these other divisions we'll talk about but pretty straightforward pick for me i'm going to pick the bills i know you're picking the bills um you know this yep. is one that I mean, I don't look at like we said this this division has gotten a lot more interesting, of course, with the the addition of Aaron Rodgers um, and, you know, I think just what the Dolphins could be. Of course, the Patriots are still there as long as Bell checks the coach. I don't think you're ever just going to completely discount the idea that they could um, make noise and, and do something surprising. Uh, but at the end of the day, I think the Bills are still the most talented team. And so that makes them the maybe easy pick for me to win this division. I, it's I, it's the safer pick, I guess. Um, I, for safer, at least from my point of view, yeah. like when you look at the the uh, win totals as we went through with the AFC, right? They're only a, a game, a one win ahead of the Jets and Dolphins, and the Patriots are not too far down. I think they're eight and a half. Um, some places seven and a half. It's just the quality of the schedules these teams are going to have. I think they're by the end of it. You could make an argument for all four teams if you really wanted to. Maybe the Patriots less so, but I think there's an argument, especially for the Jets and Dolphins, that could be made um, in terms of the de quality of the defense for the Jets. If the offensive line, I know a lot has been made about how that unit's panning out, but you bring in Aaron Rodgers to that offense, he seems rejuvenated by the situation. Uh, I think they're going to be a really tough team, but again, every team in this division, there a lot of them are uh, top 10 uh, projected schedule strengths. The Dolphins are one that it's just it's 
I want to believe and I really love watching them and had such a fun uh it was such a fun season last year but you see like the the gaps when Armstead went down and then now obviously they don't have Jalen Ramsey until late in the season right so um, as much as I want to believe in a lot of the talent they have with and bringing in Fangio and what that can mean f- from a philosophy point of view for that defense and how McDaniel is going to adapt on the offensive side of the ball um, to some of the things teams started uh, doing uh, to help defend two over the course of the season. Um, I don't know. They're, they're one that I just had a hard time think at the end of the day saying they're going to be better than Buffalo. I mean, the Bills still have uh, the projected number one DVOA defense in the league, and they have Josh Allen. I mean, that's enough right there to, to make this an automatic playoff team for me. They have a third toughest schedule uh, projected in the league, but I think they check just so many boxes as a, as a whole roster, and I think that the depth that they have, some of the reinforcements they made and bringing in uh, Dalton Kincaid to the, the receiving room already at tight end, more of a, you know, a tight end, but still another weapon for Josh. I just think there's too many things here that, they, they, that last year was almost like a negative regression. They still obviously won a lot of games and end up uh, getting the two seed in the AFC and things break their way a little bit differently. They they, they end up winning that uh, or having the number one seed, getting a buy. Maybe things change. They, they did beat Kansas City in the regular season, um, and we've seen them kind of hang tough with these teams. So they're the one proven – like for me, they're the safe pick. And I, as much as I wanted to try to be different – you know, I've loved the Bills, so I, I mean, I couldn't. I, we, we've kind of we jumped. Out, I believe going back to our 2020 predictions, we picked them that year to win the division. Um, uh, not the craziest pick because they just made the playoffs, but Josh hadn't taken off until that season. So there, we, we jumped on that bandwagon pretty early on, and I'm not going to hop off here in 2023 um, until I see uh, some other things start to fall apart. But I, I just think they're too balanced of a team, and Josh is week to week and find enough ways to win games with that defense. They're still one of the best teams in the entire NFL. All right, over to the NFC East and for the second straight year, maybe beyond that, I've only looked past I looked back to last year. We're split mm-hmm. again on our pick for the NFC East and we're st- sticking with the same team that we each picked yep. last year. Of course, Dylan, I got that one right. Um, but you're you're back on the bandwagon with uh, another team here. I am going to stick with the Eagles who I picked to kind of Look, I didn't pick the Eagles to emerge and get to the Super Bowl last year, but I did think they were set for kind of a breakout season. We saw that, of course, uh, and I did pick them to win uh, the division last year. I'm going to do the same this year, which I know you know probably a lot of people are doing given how they finished the year. But, yeah, I just I, I think this is one where I don't expect the Eagles to take a huge step back. Um, are they as good as last year? Who knows? Because, you know, you have to have a lot of things break your way to have the season they had, but I am – fully confident in what Nick Sirianni's done there and yeah so I'm gonna I'm gonna go with the the, the motto I guess Dylan that uh, if it's not broke you know there's no reason to fix it right <laughs> and so I'm just gonna stick with the Eagles here and go with them so yeah I was it was funny because I picked the Cowboys last year to win the division not like they're way too far behind uh, getting yeah. the, the top wild card spot but I in our preview I basically by the before week one even started, I was already feeling some regret there because I was so high on Philly just in terms of uh, I keep sticking to that being my the one lock last year was that they're, they're going to go way over their win total, which at one point was eight and a half. Sure enough, uh, it went up to nine and a half, I think, before the season, but <clears throat> they crushed that. Um, I still believe in the Eagles. This is less about uh, lack of belief in them, and I still think they're going to be one of potentially three teams really three teams that I personally considered um, to win the NFC uh, when we get down to the, our Super Bowl picks. Um, but I, I still, I, this is more so just looking at the overall strength of Dallas, the, you know, they're projected DVOA wise to be the top team in the entire league. There's really not many situations where they're not at least a nine, 10 win team. Like that's like their floor. Um, and, and most projections, I, I don't think, um, I think the defense is just going to continue to take strides. I think Micah Parsons, he is one of the best players in the entire NFL, and he has been really early on in his career. And just to think of some of the reinforcements that they made, maybe that times they draft for need a little more than um, always drafting just the best player available, which we know Philadelphia. And I, if I had to have any um, GM be my, uh, for my favorite team, it would probably be Howie Roseman with what he's done with Philadelphia over the years. Um, to retool and how deep these rosters can be and um, everything about the Eagles. Again, this is not really about them. It's just taking a, a dice roll on Dallas to have this be the year that they figured out. They've won some division titles. It hasn't meant much in the playoffs, but um, I, I think that the, uh, their two games are probably going to dictate who wins this division, and both rosters are really strong. And even if I 
probably trust Jalen Hurts more than Dak at this point. Um, and look at the receiving tools. I'm trying to talk myself back out of it. <laughs> I just think that the Cowboys' uh, defense, maybe, I mean, Philadelphia at times was great last year. And we, we'll see how they, you know, I know Jonathan Gannon had an up and down relationship with the Eagles fans now with the Arizona Cardinals head coach. But you saw at times in the Super Bowl that they weren't necessarily the strongest unit against the best teams they played. They had a much softer schedule last year, which is another thing that played into why I thought they were for sure going to go over that win total. This year projected to be 10th. Dallas only at 13, so they're pretty close there. Um, I think they're both still going to be, pro- you know, if not the top two teams in the entire NFC, two of the three. Um, and I'm just giving Dallas a slight edge, also because we have quite a few uh, division winners that are matched up. So I had to find a little, I um, found a few places where we could change it up. And this is one where I could reasonably see a Cowboys team not just winning even this division, but possibly being the top seed in the in the conference. Um, I think the 49ers might have something to say about that. But, uh, yeah, I think that they're, these two, uh, the games between Dallas and Philly are definitely top of the list. There's so many great matchups we're obviously excited for over the course of the whole season. But those two games are appointment television, and uh, they were last year. And we got really close to seeing them, even with the Cowboys' struggles in that game against the Niners. We got really close to the, seeing them play in an NFC title game last year. Before we get back to our discussion, let me take a minute to tell you guys about our amazing sponsor, Factor. With the fall football season already in swing, you might be looking for wholesome, convenient meals for jam-packed game days. Between setting my fantasy lineup last minute and trying to run errands before the first slate kicks off, I don't always choose the healthiest meal options on Sundays. Factor, America's number one ready-to-eat meal kit, can help you fuel up fast with chef-prepared, dietitian-approved, ready-to-eat meals delivered straight to your door. You'll save time, eat well, and stay locked in on your favorite team's game. You can choose from over 34 weekly flavor-packed, fresh, never-frozen meals ready to eat in just two minutes. Round out those meals and replenish your snack supply for seven hours of gridiron action with an assortment of 45-plus add-ons, including breakfast items like their delicious apple cinnamon pancakes, bacon and cheddar egg bites, and potato, bacon, and eggs breakfast skillets. I recently had the breakfast tostada bake with roasted sweet potatoes and salsa roja. It was legit incredible, and I can definitely see myself ordering it again for a pregame meal. Head to factormeals.com slash establish50 and use code establish50 to get 50% off. That's code establish50 at factormeals.com slash establish50 to get 50% off. And now, back to the show. Yeah. Well, I don't know that you and I had a lot of um, difference of opinion on the next one, and that is our brand here, the AFC South. Uh, yes. I did not <laughs> hesitate at all on this one. I, I went with the Jags. I mean, yes, I think the Titans would probably be the next team in line, but I just can't do it. Like, I, I think the Jags are the team uh, to win the division. Of course, last year, Dylan, I'm going to go back and compare. Uh, we both picked the Colts to win the division last year. Um, and I think, you know, again, you just look at the Jags, their ascent, I I look at them too and just feel like they are not really going backwards. I mean, it felt like everything finally kind of clicked for them last year, and I just don't trust anybody else in the division. And it's wild to think that I do trust the team in that division at this point because our, our entire thing over the past several years has been that we don't trust anyone in the AFC South. But I feel like I, I trust the Jaguars now, and I don't trust any other three teams, so that made this the easy choice for me. Yeah, we talked about – the Jags last year and we were like, we want to do it, but we, we didn't pull the trigger. Yeah, we got to be a right. little more and maybe this will be another year where there'll be another team that we felt that way about. But I, I don't know. I think maybe that's uh maybe our, when we get pretty soon here to the NFC North, maybe that's us that jump on the hot train with everyone else on the lines. But yeah, in this division, um, I, I really think that it's going to take a second still for Houston and Indianapolis. I didn't really consider them at all even though I'm ex- really excited to see what Anthony Richardson does and C.J. Stroud and overall what uh, how that defense for Houston in, in particular starts to, to come together. I think Indianapolis still has some work to do. Obviously gave up uh, or you know, was able to stand pat there in the draft, not give up anything, um, and still get Richardson as they wanted. So um, I, I think for them, that their ability to, to gain – they, they traded back a number of times. They'll be an interesting team, but from uh, this AFC, it's it's just too strong, and really it only came down to them and Tennessee in my mind, and I just don't – even Tennessee's defense that has been like the one really big strong point for them, I, I do wonder if it's going to have a bit of regression there. I don't have a lot of confidence, obviously, in the receiving room. We've talked about you know, even with uh, bringing in Hopkins. I don't know if it's uh, a group that I'm feeling overly confident about 
producing in a big way. And I mean, it's just you're asking a lot of the defense and the running game to hold things together when you got Jacksonville, who um, at the very least has uh, an offense that should be great. I don't, you know, the offense, even when the offensive line has some uh, moments, depending on their opponent. Trevor started to figure things out. We started seeing against better defenses, and as unlike a lot of younger quarterbacks, that is um, uh, that as teams figure them out over the course of the season, we start to see them struggle more. He, on the opposite, and started playing better and started, uh, you know, ascending with that uh, alongside his teammates and bringing them together. And I just the positive momentum they built, not just the playoff win, but also how they they competed with the Chiefs. They were right there in that game. A few bounces of the ball, maybe that game's a little bit closer at the end. Um, it's kind of like a moment of them saying like, all right, this is what it's like. Now we can, now let's go back into the, to the, uh, drawing board and see if we can come back to this place. I just don't think they're going to fall back far enough to where the competition is in the division. They're DVOA wise, uh, where everything's always pushed to the middle and pushed to the mean. They still have a projected win total over two higher than Tennessee. That's a pretty big difference, um, with their, win, with those win projections. So even though the defense might be a problem, uh, this is going to be a fun red zone team. A lot of high scoring games, probably. Um, and I still think the Jags, yeah, they, I didn't put way too much thought at, there at this point. Trevor Lawrence is uh, just by himself. Um, and obviously, they have a lot of talent around him, but him himself, I mean, he, I think he's getting to that next level. Obviously, when we talked about top 10 quarterbacks, we had him in there for a reason. And I think, um, yeah, I think the Jags are going to be a lot of fun once again. All right, perhaps one of the toughest ones to figure out here, uh, maybe the hardest to predict for me looking at this, and that is the NFC South, where I would say most people are picking the Saints and the Falcons, as you and I talked um, before we started recording. I, Bucks probably not getting picked like they have been over the past several years now, or yeah. many years, um, to be in that conversation. But the Panthers, I think, are intriguing Although I looked at their schedule and I'm just like, yeah, boy, it's it's not an easy <laughs> schedule, especially like weeks one through seven or something for the Panthers, where they could theoretically lose all those games. I don't think they will, but so looking at the schedules and such, Saints don't play an easy schedule by any means. But uh, I'll be honest, Dylan, I, this I don't have a very low confidence in this pick here. I went with the Saints uh, to as my pick to win this division. I think this is one where everybody is just right there beside each other. I don't think you see that huge separation. Um, maybe even, like I said, definitely from the top two teams, maybe from the top three teams uh, yeah. in this division. And we know how things turned out last year. I don't know. I just think this is the hardest one to predict. But by default, I went with the Saints. But I could certainly like – I said I could make an argument for the Falcons, maybe a little less of an argument for the Panthers. Everything would have to go right. I can't really make an argument for the Bucks, um, and so yeah, I mean this was tough, but I went with the Saints. Yeah, we talked about it for a bit in the uh, NFC win total preview, uh, preview that we had, and these have, teams have the two projected easiest schedules in the entire NFL with Atlanta and New Orleans, and that plays a big part into me picking the Falcons here. But it, it was a coin flip between them and New Orleans, and once again, we didn't have too many different uh, division winners, so I. <laughs> decided to go with Atlanta here. <laughs> yeah. um, I, as much as I'm excited about Carolina, I, I still think that that's, that's a roster that um, I still have questions mark, question marks in the offensive line. See how quickly Mingo uh, can take off there with Bryce. And just overall, um, I don't know if the situation for Bryce immediately is going to be where Carolina needs it to be to win this division, even in this year where it's definitely not considered uh, among a lower uh, class. I think Tampa... I think their defense will still be interesting, but I don't, and there's a lot of good players still there, but I still didn't really consider them. Um, I, I just think the drop off, you know, moving on from Tom, we'll see how Baker does. That'd be amazing if he could have a solid season and kind of keep them at least afloat in the middle of the pack. And I, I really wouldn't be shocked if all four of these teams, like we're looking at the last three weeks of the year and they're all within a couple games of each other, kind of like last year, but maybe a, maybe a slightly better record for them just because their schedules are easier. Um, and they're so bound to win some games against each other and against the NF or the AFC South. Um, but I think Atlanta their defense, I think is starting to, to come together. I, I believe in their offensive line. Obviously, they don't have a quarterback that you're feeling as good about it. At least I'm not with Ritter yet compared to a Derek Carr. Um, and I, I think the Saints are definitely, uh, as you'll see, uh, we'll talk about, I'll talk about the Saints a, a bit in a, a sec here too. But I think they're both teams that are in the in this new look NFC solid enough with, their, with the schedules that line up for them to maybe other teams that they're right on par with 
that have to play tougher opponents week to week aren't going to be quite there with Atlanta and New Orleans. And I think their games, even when one team is really bad, the, the Falcons Saints games, that rivalry is very fierce. Uh, feels a little more like college football rivalry than some in the NFL. Um, I, I think they're neck and neck also DVO projection wise. The Falcons only 0.1 ahead of New Orleans. This is not like Jacksonville and Tennessee. They basically line up almost exactly. Um, I, I think it's going to be close to the end. I mean, this is one where like the last game of the year is going to uh, probably decide this one. I think it'll be basically knotted up until then. And uh, yeah, I'll pick Atlanta, but I, I uh, don't feel good about it. Again, I think I could have flipped a coin and uh, I'd take either side of it and be fine here. I think both teams have just as good a chance to win this division. AFC North, pretty interesting because, um, yeah, I don't know. I feel like this is another one where on the surface – Maybe there are people that could make an argument for multiple teams here. I just I go back to the Bengals and I just feel like they are a step ahead of everyone else at this point. And um, you know, we've talked about which we may talk about the Ravens a little more in a minute. You know, Steelers, what could they be now as as Kenny Pickett, you know, gets a little more experience and everything else around him. The Browns, um in, intriguing for a lot of different reasons, but this is another one where I didn't really hesitate in terms of making the pick here. Maybe it's just the easy pick, but um, I just, we've set the line before, Dylan. It's, as long as Joe Burrow is the quarterback and is on the field, I just don't have many reasons to pick against the Bengals. Now, yes, he can't do it all on his own, and I think they've got a, a very good supporting cast, as we know, uh, around him. But, yeah, this was this was one I didn't really hesitate on in picking the Bengals. I didn't hesitate too much, but man, I I think it's going to be close. I I don't think uh, this is as we talked right with the AFC East, uh, probably the best division uh, in the NFL. The only one with four teams projected to have uh, be finish in the top half of win totals um, in the entire league. Pittsburgh uh, projected to finish last with a win total over five hundred still. So I mean, yeah, the, this is going to be. Every one of these games is going to be nuts. Uh, Cleveland seems to have Cincinnati's number. Cincinnati's seem to have Pittsburgh's number the last couple of years with Burrow. Pittsburgh's kind of had Cleveland's number. Baltimore's kind of been all over the place. Well, yeah, so it's it's uh, the, the games between these teams, even when Cleveland's kind of been down, have been right there neck and neck. Um, and I just, as you said, though, was I had a really hard time at the end of the day being like, they have Joe Burrow. And they still have a lot of, even if they, the back half of that defense, um, you know, you lose both your safeties uh, with Von Bell and Jesse Bates. And I I still tend to believe they're going to figure it out enough. And maybe that they're going to have to score a few more points than they've had, than they had to. And they started slow last year, but they still end up pulling themselves out of it. I think the schedule last year was a little bit tougher than it's projected to be this season. Um, And, yeah, I'm this division though. I mean, I wouldn't be surprised, literally, if any four. Like I said, it kind of with the AFC East. Maybe would be surprised if the Patriots here. I would not be surprised if the Steelers won it. I almost picked them to to yeah. make the playoffs, and we'll talk about them in a bit. I think the Ravens, if things break right with Todd Munkin and Lamar stays healthy, and the defense as it took strides at the end of last year, their special teams are always great. Baltimore could be the number one seed in the AFC. I wouldn't blink an eye. Uh, not let alone win this division. Cleveland's the weird one, but as we talked about, they're uh, projected, they have the highest project, projected DVOA win total, um, and in terms of what this team has balanced on both offense and defense, I think outside of quarterback, we feel pretty good about the roster build they've had. Um, I know I'm a homer for DTR, obviously their backup quarterback. So if he has to take over and Deshaun just can't get back to where he was, I still think the Browns are going to be a pretty formidable team um, with an offensive line that is among the best in the league. Nick Chubbs, uh, just as consistent as they come, uh, receiving corpse solid. Um, I think Elijah Moore gives them an element they haven't had. So, yeah, I mean, literally every one of these teams has an argument, but only one of them has Joe Burrow. And that's why ultimately yeah, I didn't, uh, even if it was a, I think it's going to be close. I I wouldn't say I struggled to make this pick. I can live with another team winning the division. If I pick against, Joe Burrow and then the, the the Bengals easily win this division. I would uh, feel pretty bad about it. So once again, going with the safer pick in my mind here. That's the more succinct way to put it is <laughs> only one of these teams has Joe Burrow. That That is all you need to say um, yeah. perhaps for making this pick. But no, it uh, should be one of the tougher divisions as usual, but I just I think the Bengals wind up on top. All right, yep. it's time. We've gotten to the point where we have to <laughs> put up or shut up here, Dylan. The Detroit Lions, um, the bandwagon, the hype is is everywhere. 
A lot of people jumping on the Lions bet. Are we going to be those people who are joining as well to pick the Lions to win the division? It turns out we are. Um, I pick the Lions, and I know you are too here. Um, uh, here's what I tried to do, Dylan, to, to separate this. I tried to make a convincing argument for anyone else, and I just I couldn't make a better argument than I can make for the Lions. And that's kind of what this came down to is I can't make an argument for the Bears until I see it. I can't make an argument for the Packers until I see what they're going to look like without Aaron Rodgers and Jordan Love yeah. stepping in and the other questions that, that are there too. The Vikings, as we, we mentioned, were just such a – I mean, such a weird team last year, right? We, we talk about just the the projections and you look at the advanced numbers and everything. It's like that was not a team that should have won that many games. And so – it's just, it's so hard, but at the same, you can also look at the Lions and say, I just feel like that's a team that's on the upswing. And if there's ever an opportunity to do it, it feels like this is the year, um, just given the nature of the division itself. And so I'm going to do it. I'm going to pick the Lions to win the NFC North. It's not, yeah, not something we thought we'd be doing here on this podcast, but hey, there was a time, not probably a little bit before we started recording this podcast that we probably wouldn't have ever thought we'd do that for the Buffalo Bills, and now they're winning it every year. Um, obviously, the Lions not with quite the, even the level of success as Buffalo. It's uh, it's crazy what Dan Campbell's built, but it, it feels, it, it felt, you know, last year when they finished nine and eight, right, that they could have easily been an 11 win team. Um, it didn't feel like they were that far off. They had a couple little things, and you're going to have some bad luck. But I, I, I do think that the the fortunes for them, if they do ha- turn uh, lower like they did in the first half of last year, they're still going to be a solid team. I think their defense has come together much better. I think they've started to build enough there where they can be at least average, and that's with their offensive line um, and the way that Jared Goff's kind of taken off. And, and I think keeping – Ben Johnson and him not getting hired away somewhere was a really pivotal thing for the Lions this year. If, if he was gone, I might have had some more hesitations um, here. But it is also a reflection of this division that, yeah, I, I, I'm not. Try, I, I really enjoy watching Kirk Cousins in that Vikings offense, but I just do not think that defense is in a place right now where they're going to make this team a contender. I, and I don't think they're going to go whatever it was nine and zero in one score games, ten and zero in one score games until the playoffs, where it finally bit them. Um, Chicago defense still has way too much building to do. I, as much as I'm wearing a Justin Fields shirt right now, I'm excited to watch that man uh, and, and this offense and see how see if he can convince the Bears he's the guy. Uh, they do have an escape hatch this year. With a lot of great quarterbacks in this upcoming draft class, and I believe they still have uh, yeah they have their own first round picks and Carolinas. So uh, there's there's a world where I know everyone's talking about Arizona being the one of the worst teams in the league and being the place for Caleb or Drake May, but if the bears really if it doesn't work out with with justin they could be in that kind of conversation i don't if they do reach their uh, you know if he really takes off and he takes over i still don't think there's enough on that defense for this to be a play uh, a team winning the division at least maybe they could sniff a, a wild card berth in a weaker nfc so it came down to me for detroit and green bay and i, I know i'm higher on green bay than you probably um i'm i'm worried that yeah i'm gonna we're going to watch like three weeks of the season and be like, yep, Jordan Love is at least um, better than average. And that's enough with an offensive line. that's going to be top five in the league and probably the best running back duo in the entire NFL and some really talented receivers. They, they draft a tight end. I, I think they're, uh, we'll see Matt LaFleur be able to do some things that not that having Aaron Rodgers will be a problem and uh, overall, but I think the offense, even if he's publicly said, uh, that it's not going to make a difference um, in terms of what the offense looks like. I believe their team president, Mark Murphy, basically said <laughs> exactly the opposite, that we're going to see Matt LaFleur kind of uh, show what he can do. And, yeah, I, I think their defense should be at least average. Um, I still have questions at times about their run defense, but I, I think Rashawn Gary is a little underrated on the outside. They have some solid corners, and I, I think they, they're a team that's built uh, – enough on that side where I think they're going to give the Lions a scare, but I'll pick Detroit to still win it because I still think that having that offensive line, they have, I mean, these are two of the best offensive lines overall in the entire NFL and Ben Johnson's great. I mean, I think these teams are going to be neck and neck. Um, I don't think it's going to be as, you know, the hype train is all over Detroit, but I think green Bay is the one that's going to scare them, but I'll still stick with the Lions because it's a little more fun. I think uh, even if I'm, couldn't be more excited to see what Jordan Love can do. Um, I'm more excited than I thought I was going to be uh, with how he's looked, not just in the preseason, but everything um, about uh, every, all reading into what's happening in Green Bay so far. 
All right, AFC West. Here's one that um, did. Did you did you have any reason to pick anyone other than the nope. Chiefs here? Like any reason at all? None. After after picking the Chargers last year, I don't think I will. Right. Even <laughs> if the say, Chargers win this division three I'm straight years. Yeah. <laughs> I, I was gonna say I picked the Chargers to make the Super Bowl last year. That was enough for me. Um, so I'm picking the Chiefs to win the AFC West this year. So. It, it's pretty simple. I think they have, Pat, uh, once again, Patrick Mahomes. But obviously, Justin Herbert's great, but I, I just trust Andy Reid uh, more. And I, I, even if I think the char- I think the Chargers just have a world with a really tough schedule. Kansas City has a tough schedule, too. But I think there's a world where the Chargers are fighting for a playoff spot, which they were last year. They had to win late to get in. It, it wasn't – they lost to the Texans, I think, and they, they had some weird games happen. And it's just the Chargers, man, and it's the uh, defending Super Bowl champions. There's no way I was going to pick against Kansas City here. Yeah. A uh, pretty easy choice for this one, I think, for sure, against the defending champions. And, yeah, probably not going to make the argument for the Broncos or the Raiders uh, in this spot by any means. All right, no. NFC West. Another one that I would say the consensus out there for most people is that the Niners are going to win this division. We're both going to pick the Niners in this one. Um, I, I don't think there's no one picking the Cardinals. I've seen a few people pick the Seahawks, Dylan. There's kind of as a maybe a surprise choice in this spot, but I think the better choice – maybe uh wild card wise which we may talk about here in a second uh but yeah i didn't really see any reason and, and i know the rams i mean I, I told you i'm trying to get you back on you know the rams getting back to where they need to be but i can't pick them to win the division over the niners here so no no way uh i think their defense as i've talked about for la is in need of quite a few reinforcements and i think that's fine for that for uh, their purposes this year um i think that you know i think they found some guys with kobe durant and um obviously they have still aaron donald so you're gonna feel good about that position and ernest jones but i just think depth wise across the roster it's a lot of young guys it's gonna be a problem even if the offense stays healthy and i still have concerns the offensive line even with if it's healthier still isn't good enough to make this team uh, anything more than maybe a fringe wild card team um arizona as we know just a lot they're acknowledging that it's time to rebuild um, we'll see if Kyler gets in. We'll see what, if the, how the defense looks under Gannon. But I think they're going to be as bad as advertised. I think the Rams are going to kind of be down with them. So, yeah, Seattle is only really the one I would consider as a possible upset bid. But I, I don't know if they're um, – I think the defense would be better. But I, I think the offense might slip back a bit. Uh, this is a team – or this is probably a division, though, with actually the widest projected win total f- uh, from Aaron Schatz and DVOA projections that has a, almost a th- by three more wins with San Francisco. They're tied with Dallas for the highest win total projected in the entire league, and Seattle's down at 8.2. So I think San Francisco's defense, um, maybe some question marks in the offensive line with uh, losing McGlinchey and just overall – there maybe it's not as strong as past years but I, I trust Kyle Shanahan I trust the monsters they have at every skill position on offense and the monsters they have up front on their defensive line all those things are enough in this division for me to to not really have to think too hard about San Francisco um, cruising to a division title all right now that leads us to our wild card <laughs> picks and this is where things get very challenging For sure, and we always say that when we get to these picks um, because you know you're just going to leave a team out. And so I'll do my NFC wildcard picks here. Of course, I picked the Eagles to win the NFC East, so I'm going to pick the Cowboys to make it in as a wildcard. And this is where things got hard for me because I'm like, there were a couple different options I feel like. You said I'm I'm probably not as high on the Packers as you are, but I'm not that far away. Like I don't think the Packers are just going to turn into a 4-1 team or anything. Um, But it was hard not to to put them in this category for me i think uh and Mm -hmm. now that i think about it i might want to flip them because i have the seahawks in and you know i think and i think there's some people who feel like the seahawks maybe just one of those years right where you just get a lot of things to go your way and things feel pretty good about um that and they finish what nine and nine they lost that game to the niners in the playoffs I, i still just tend to think they can get back and keep this thing going um never easy to do in the nfl and so i i kind of want to flip it to the packers now that i'm thinking about it but i won't do it i'll I'll stick with the seahawks because spoiler alert you're gonna have the packers in yours so i'll just to get a couple extra teams in here i'll go with the seahawks and i'm gonna go with the team that you picked to win the nfc south and even as we say this division could be i don't think it's gonna be what it was last year but i picked the saints to win the division you picked the falcons i'm gonna pick the falcons is one of my wild card teams. So I'm going to go Cowboys, Seahawks, Falcons with the thought that 
if I really wanted, to, I would not replace the Cowboys in any scenario. But if I yeah. really wanted to replace the Seahawks or the Falcons, it would probably be, you know, with, with the Packers, Vikings combination, although then you'd have three teams getting in from that division. But um, it was hard to leave the Vikings out, hard to leave the Packers out. To be different, I'm going to go Seahawks and Falcons here. Yeah, I didn't feel, I will say the Cowboys are the one that are, in my case, the Eagles. Um, whoever I didn't pick to win the division, I was going to pick to, to be the five seed. I, I'm not even just saying, yeah, wild card. I'm saying they're going to be the top yeah. <laughs> seed uh, uh, of the, these teams. And then after that, it is, in my opinion, uh, kind of all over the place. Like if, if I hadn't picked the Falcons to win the division and I picked the Saints, I don't know for sure if I would have picked them here because um i think whoever doesn't win that division is going to be in a group of teams in an eight nine win range probably and i think it's going to be more some some teams that we probably don't expect i think washington with their defense has a a, a potential to at least kind of stick around the only thing is a lot of the teams in that division have um or the, the other two teams in that division washington and the giants have to face the eagles twice they have to face the cowboys twice they both have top 10 projected schedules and i just even though the giants obviously made it to the divisional round last year and got humbled real quick by philadelphia at that point i still think there's I still have questions about how quick, uh, you know, if they can stay healthy and then if they can sustain what they uh, built on last year. I think teams aren't going to be, they're not going to come up as a surprise when teams have them on the schedule the same way. So I just didn't really consider the Giants for all the reasons I talked about Minnesota. I, I just, I mean, I think you're higher still on them than maybe me. I, maybe I'm sticking too hard to the projections here, but they're a team at 6.4 projected wins by football or old football outsiders, but Aaron Schatz's is DVO projections. I just don't. I, I, it's hard. Maybe they can do it again, but more often they've been the team that's been unlucky where they've been better than their record. They usually lose those one score games. And there's, there's some, something to be said about the ability to win those games with what Kirk Cousins do, has done in crunch time lately and having a weapon like Justin Jefferson. I think the offense will be fine. I just don't think their defense is good enough. So, yeah, um, the foul, or the the Saints for me. I just think that because of the schedule being as easy to, as it is, I just think whoever doesn't win that division between those two is going to just have enough games where they win. Um, it, it might not be that they're better necessarily as a team, but they'll get in. And yeah, Seattle is definitely one I think for me that I consider the closest next. Um, really, of any, I didn't really. I probably had eight teams here that I was considering ultimately, even if I think I can make an argument for some underneath. And I just, Green Bay just felt like I didn't want to, I wanted to have something that, you know, didn't rely on, yes, yeah, I think Seattle's defense is going to be better, and I think they have so many great playmakers. I just don't, I'd like to see Gino maybe one more year, keep, uh, keep things rolling yeah. there with that team and uh, see that the offensive line holds up well enough. Um, and I just didn't want to not put, not put the Packers in and be like, dang, this this is uh, rolling right along. Um, still, uh, you know, such a sustainable roster building um uh, thing they got going and yeah they're also their postseason odd 61 percent versus seattle 42.5 by these same projections so that that was a big enough jump for me where i was like all right fine i'll just stick to this and um <laughs> we'll see how it goes but I, I i really do think the packers could win the division um themselves too so another thing that another reason i'm like well even if, if they i could still at least say i picked them as a playoff team if they do win the nfc north so another reason to slide them in there with the last spot makes more sense. I think the Packers have a better chance of winning the NFC North than the Seahawks do of winning the NFC West. So that does make sense from a um, mathematical standpoint to put them uh, into the mix there. So nonetheless, at least we get some some different picks here uh, in yes. terms of our final wild card team. We, we both have Cowboys, Falcons, Eagles, Saints all in, but Seahawks and Packers will have uh, each into the playoffs. All right, AFC. Boy, this is another one where Might change we're going to have some different teams. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, and you, Dylan's thinking about changing his picks. So uh, this is one where we both picked the Chiefs to win the AFC West, and again, spoiler alert, we're both going to have the Chargers in uh, as a, a wild card team. Didn't really have much hesitation on that. After that, man, I just I don't know what to do because I, I'm ultimately decided on the Dolphins and the Ravens as my wild card picks. Now, that's pretty... I don't again. I'm just not really going out on a limb there because I think that most people probably would have these two in the playoffs in some form or fashion. But it's not. He said it's not a lock. You know, Jalen Ramsey, you know, we'll be back for a while. Ravens, you know, I just think maybe it's just banking on John Harbaugh and and the ability to get them there. But as we said, that's a really tough division. I don't think they're going to finish last by any means, but it's a tough division. And so 
uh, everybody could be, you know, a game away from each other and you could still be yeah. third or fourth. And so, um, yeah, so I think that it makes it hard and, and the path is not easy for either of these teams. And of course, by picking the Dolphins and the Ravens, you know, I'm leaving out a team like the Jets. I'm leaving out, I don't know, maybe the Titans, right? Because they play in the NFC South where they can pick up a few more wins, uh, perhaps just given that we don't have high expectations for the Colts and uh, Texans. But yeah, I just, I think I went with kind of what we know here and I feel like there's more confidence and at least sort of just looking at maybe the state of the rosters for the Chargers, Dolphins, and Ravens, I'm willing just to bank on hopefully some predictability with with a couple of those teams, even though they've all been unpredictable in their own right. But leaving the Jets out was a challenge because, remember, the Jets were not that far away from it. I mean, they started, what, 7-3 yeah. last year before they lost every game uh, down the stretch. But that was the hardest one probably for me to keep out, not putting the Jets in there. But I just... I guess you. I guess I would replace them with the Dolphins, but I just I tend to think the Dolphins will be better. But I that's a tough one for me. It's like a fifty-five forty-five confidence level on those two. So it's it's so hard. I knew it was going to be really hard the whole time. Like there was never a point at this conference that I felt good about. I really felt like for sure I was like Buffalo, Cincinnati, Kansas City. I'm going to pick them probably to win their divisions. Yeah. But after those three. Even the Jaguars, as confident as I am that they'll win the division, I, I just had such a hard time with everyone else. There's too many good teams, and we didn't even you know, we barely even mention Denver. I, I got to wait to talk about a team. I got to wait to see it to believe it. Um, with Sean Payton in that group before I'm going to pick them to ultimately win this whole thing or uh, to win a wild card berth and earn that. I just think the conference is so deep. They have such a tough schedule. Like you mentioned, Tennessee. I, I didn't really consider the Raiders, even though. Maybe in a perfect world, they're, they're going to be right in the mix. I, I just have more confidence in uh, some of these other teams. Same with New England. I think their defense could be great. I think they could be better on offense, but they have the toughest projected schedule. Miami has the second toughest, and you, you mentioned the Jets. They're fourth. So, I mean, that whole division is filled with uh, really tough schedules. I just think the Jets, the, the def I think the defense is going to be really good. I just do, and I, I think that, that combined with some of the things they've done on offense and obviously adding Aaron Rodgers, but just other personnel – moves and another year of Garrett Wilson uh, and having a quarterback like Aaron with him, what that could mean for his production from a, in a lot of uh, ways for fantasy owners, for the Jets and everything. They're projected just to finish fifth in overall DVOA as a, a roster. So I, I, they're, for me, we're probably in my number five team. The Chargers are the one, one of the ones that I was not feeling as good about. Their, their playoff odds, um, DVOA-wise, projection-wise, are 50%. Uh, not because they're not supposed to be a 9-10 win team, just because a lot of teams are supposed to be 9-10 win teams. They also have the sixth toughest yeah. schedule. they, they got to play the Chiefs twice, obviously. Um, it doesn't – there's a there's a path there where their defense, for me, is just still something's missing. Um, it, it doesn't – they're a team that I, I'm worried against some of the some of their opponents – um, that want to run the football. They're just not, even with some of the personnel they've tried to bring in, they're just not fully equipped when they're facing a, a Dallas. They're facing uh, even the Jets now with their two-headed monster if Brees can stay healthy and then having Dalvin. Um, I, I just look up and down their, their schedule, Baltimore. I see a lot of tough matchups. Um, or I, I think the reason I still have them in there and the reason I think I'm going to keep them in there is because they have Justin Herbert. I, I really think Kellen Moore um, is going to be an upgrade over Lombardi for that, for at least what the Chargers want to do in their personnel. I just have a, I think Justin Herbert is fantastic, and I, I don't, you know, I know what happened in the playoffs and how much blame is assigned to whoever. Uh, I just have a hard time still picking against him, not finding a way to get to the postseason. So, but that again, I'm leaving out at the moment the Dolphins and Ravens. Uh, my last one is are the Browns. I they have again the highest projected win total in this division in this really tough division ahead of the Bengals. They play a schedule that out of all these teams um, in the North and East and the AFC that are all like top ten projected schedules. They're at 22nd. Um, I just think that there's enough things, and this is really this could bite me, but it's like it's fine. Like it's one of my wild card picks. I wanted to put the Steelers in above them. Uh, I still was going to leave out the Ravens and Dolphins, and I, I really and I still think I wouldn't be surprised as I've talked about when we went in the AFC episode. I think the Steelers are right there as a you know I think Kenny Pickett could take a step 
I think the defense is solid enough. I think the roster is good enough for them just to stay in a lot of games and what that could mean. And I, I do have concerns about Cleveland and the games where maybe they're they're winning a few against opponents that are uh, towards the top of the, of the league overall. But can they take care of business with their gimmies? That's been kind of a problem for them for a long time. But um, this is less even a worry uh, looking into Deshaun. I just think that I think the roster is strong enough. I think the defense is going to be good enough. Um they start 0-2 against Cincinnati and Pittsburgh, it gets dicey. they got to win one of those two games, in my opinion. Um, I think that Week 2 game in particular, I think Pittsburgh opens up with San Francisco. Uh, that might be a tough one to win. So there's a chance that Pittsburgh and the Browns are both feeling pretty big Week 2 Monday night game that one of them has to win that one. Um, it's a tough schedule early on. If they weather the storm early on, though, it eases up a lot with teams like Indian. Indianapolis, Arizona. We'll see what uh, Denver is like, but the Rams, Chicago, Houston. I, I just I, I find more wins for them where other games for uh, the Dolphins and Ravens, in particular, with the, the strength of their schedules that are more coin flips. And and I wanted a one more pick to be a little different. And I'm gotta stick to my to my stat um, my stat heads over at the old Football Outsiders. And now what Aaron Schatz is doing. So I'll pick Cleveland to get in as that last spot. They have a 64.4% chance to make the playoffs by their projections. Um, that's higher than a lot of these other teams. I think Miami's at 34.5%. Pittsburgh's 45%. Uh, the only one that technically is a little higher than 50 is Baltimore, just above the Chargers. So that's – the Ravens are the one I'm the most concerned about leaving out. I'm less concerned about Miami and probably maybe even Pittsburgh. I think the Ravens are one that I – if they if they end up with uh, winning the division and a top two seed in the AFC, I'm going to be like, how the heck did I not pick them here? But see what the Brownies can do. It should be fun. It's going to be just I, regardless of what happens. I think as I've said, it's going to be like the last two weeks. A bunch of teams that are probably going to be sitting at eight and seven or whatever, nine and six, and there's just going to be a I think a crowd of teams and how it all shakes out isn't going to be all necessarily who has the best team, but maybe who has a slightly easier schedule and who has the bound the ball bounce their way a few more times. Yeah, I, I think leaving the Jets out is hard. The hardest one for me. I just yep, think that, that's your Ravens. <laughs> I would probably swap the the Jets and the Dolphins. That that would be what I would do if I you know had to pick again. But I I'll leave the Dolphins for now as we both get them in the playoffs. Get both teams in. So yeah, we'll go with that. All right, it's time, Dylan. Our Super Bowl picks. As we said last year, I went way off the the range picking the Bucks over the Chargers, and I said I was going to just kind of go out there and pick one team, and I think I did that. Maybe a couple of years before that, picking the Cowboys to get there. Yeah. Um, I want to say that, that that was that the year Dak got injured, maybe, and that was very early on. That was um, over with. But this year, it's back to what works. Like I said earlier, that was the theme here, and I'm going back to what works. I, I'm not going too far out there because that didn't work out last year. So I'm going to pick the Chiefs over the 49ers as my Super Bowl pick. Now, Dylan, just as my backup here, I'm going to say if I did have to go out and go – with an official kind of like what I did last year. I made my official pick kind of my out there pick a little bit to get the Chargers yeah. in there. Here's what I would do. I would pick, I'm trying to think of how I would do it. I, I think I would pick the Bengals over the, I'm not going to do Bengals lines. Don't worry. Uh, <laughs> I, I would probably do Bengals over. I would probably do Bengals over Cowboys would, would be my backup choice. I don't know how out there that would be, but if we had to do that, that's what I'd go with. But I'm going to go back. I, I think I picked this matchup actually maybe the first year we started doing this. Chiefs 49ers. Um, I'm going Chiefs over the Niners Super Bowl. Yep, I, I like that pick. I think it's not it's not out of this uh, out of the range of possibilities. These are you know I think the Niners are right there. Yeah, with for me the only teams that are considered as Super Bowl contenders in the NFC or like the top top tier along with the Cowboys and. Eagles and some people might laugh the Cowboys pick I'm for the first time picking the Cowboys to make the Super Bowl I don't feel amazing about it I wish they still had Kellen Moore I'm not gonna lie but um, I, I just think the roster is really strong um, and I think it's there's some things that uh, with how the Niners are able to get to them I, I just wonder if the Niners offensive line if it comes down to them facing off again I think the Cowboys can wreak a little more havoc I think there's enough talent with, with Dallas to still mitigate that. Um, on the other side, I, I think their offensive line is, even though the Niners' defensive line is one of the best in the league, I just think they might have enough this time to get over that hump. 
And yeah, with Philadelphia, it's it's kind of a coin flip. If I had a, a you know, I should first say who I'm picking to beat Dallas. Um, I'm not having Dallas win the Super Bowl. I'm sticking with you, picking the Chiefs. Um, I've picked the Chiefs to make the Super Bowl quite a few times, and they've, I think, almost in every single instance out, outside of uh, the year the Rams and Bengals played. Um, I think it's been correct each time I've done that. Uh, I picked Buffalo last year, did not come together for them if i had to pick a, a second matchup here as you kind of said it's not really out there but probably i'd, I'd do uh bills eagles the, the, the one that i thought potentially was going to happen last year where everyone's like that's going to be the wildest pregame tailgate at a super bowl of all time um i, I think that's the that's the uh the one in a different world i i have going and i wouldn't be shocked again if the niners get in but i'm picking chiefs in dallas and i think in that super bowl as much as I think the defensive line for Dallas, I think you could have a game that's kind of similar to the Chiefs uh, Niners Super Bowl a few years ago where early on you're like, man, the Chiefs offense is struggling a bit. The offensive line is getting beat up by this front and uh, over Dallas over time kind of pulls, uh, gets a little bit of a lead, but then it's still Patrick Mahomes, still late in the game, still have his magic. And um, ultimately, yeah, I'll give the Chiefs the, the nod over Dallas in a Super Bowl of, of the original. Well, I guess the Chiefs did start as what the Dallas Texans then moved to uh, yeah. Kansas City shortly after. They didn't want to, you know, I think it made a good decision not to stay in the same market as Dallas and try to compete with that that brand there, even if it was a little earlier on in their history. So, yeah, this would be, a, I think that would be a fantastic Super Bowl. I think either of these matchups would be great. Um, uh, I, I think that one of us might end up being right with the Niners or Cowboys. And as much as we both have the Chiefs winning, I think the AFC is going to be nuts. I don't know if we're going to be able to really uh, – how easy it's going to be to predict the, whoever wins that. Whoever gets the one seed is going to have just such a huge advantage, not just because of home field, but just avoiding one coin flip-esque playoff game against a, just a – I think the seven seed, six seed in that conference are going to be really th- uh, big threats to the the top uh, – you know, the second and third division winners. So we'll see. It should be a lot of fun, but – going to stick with Mahomes this time I don't I think this is our way of saying sorry for picking the Chargers to win the division last year <laughs> yeah uh, and for me picking them to get the Super Bowl um so yeah that's that's my apologies uh here's my ultimate wacky dream scenario of Super Bowl wise and this is you know just if you're looking for the ultimate weird one give me the Lions and the Jets um, the Jets yes to, to, <laughs> to, to give me Aaron Rodgers against the Lions in the Super Bowl not on the Jets and not the Packers. So um, that'd be amazing. It's like it would bring everything full circle. Just going back to, you know, Brett Favre and like it just everything. The Lions getting to the Super Bowl to to avenge their long history of just not meeting expectations, and then to win it, they have to get through to one of the best quarterbacks ever, who just happened to play for the Packers. And so it just you know because they can't they can't play the Packers in the Super Bowl. So you know at least play the next best thing, right? So. <laughs> The Lions conquer the those demons yeah. conquer those demons yes. I, I love that pick in terms of fan base like level of starved uh, i think that that they, they match up pretty well even if the jets technically have a super bowl uh, you know over half a century ago um maybe browns lions is the ultimate <laughs> two tortured fan bases um yes. that have never i think neither of them have made There's a super no bowl either ever happen no, Never. that's only that's something that happens in Madden for someone who's a fan of one of those teams, and uh, not even for anyone else. Even Madden would be like that. No way, that's going to happen. I like the I like the Lions and Jets. I don't think I can top that. I don't think you're going to have a a whack or a, a matchup that would just be the level of intrigue and in those fan bases and like everything on the line. Feeling like if we don't win this, are we ever going to get back? Like I know a lot of fan bases might feel like that at times, but I think those two you could have a existential dread going into that game people would be like ill the week of the super bowl just because of the stress levels but also would obviously be taking it in that'd be that'd be quite the fun matchup i would love to see that and yeah the perp like you said tying it on the tying it there at the end with aaron as the um as the guy they have to go through after the, all the years that not just uh, aaron Rodgers but the packers have kind of kept them down at the bottom of the division yeah that's it. We'll see. So there are multiple Super Bowl picks. Hopefully you're all rooting for the Lions and the Jets at this point. Um, I know we are, but may not be the, the most obvious choice, but uh, there you have it. Our picks for the 2023 NFL season. Uh, and, yeah, we'll see uh, how these turn out. But, of course, still in lots of stuff to get people ready for the start of the season. So let everybody know they can find all that at Clutch Points. 
Yeah, you can go to clutchpoints.com. We have our fantasy sports section at the top of the page that, uh, you know, if you're still in the middle of draft season, lots of going on there. Uh, looking at the top breakout players, every position, sleepers, uh, overvalued, undervalued ADP players, top tier guys, everything you could want in the fantasy sports section there, top of the page. And then we have, yeah, the NFL section. We're going to have our predictions for every single team in the league, our full season predictions from our editorial staff coming up. Um, lots of breakdowns of obviously all the news, all the roster cuts that just by the time you listen to this, there'll have been a few days since then, but we've got all the, you know, finalized rosters, teams that are going to be signing players, trades that could happen. I, uh, Jonathan Taylor looks like he's staying, but teams throwing out some wild offers for him. The Packers were mentioned as a possible trade destination. That kind of nuts i didn't expect that one but especially with the talent they already have at that position but yeah any anything that happens there you can follow along on clutch points website and also the clutch points app with notifications for all big breaking news and then you can follow all nfl games in the clutch points app yep check it all out at clutch points be sure to subscribe to the podcast any podcast app you use search for Stabs the pass and thanks as always for listening to the podcast and we'll talk to you next time here on the establish the pass podcast